A question we get asked a lot is, whose is this ball in the middle when you're at the back of the court? So we're gonna break this down into beginner level, intermediate level, and advanced level, and what you and your partner should be communicating to each other so we know exactly who takes that shot. So when it comes to a beginner level and you're learning the game, you might find that you're stronger with one side rather than the other, forehand or backhand. And so in this situation, it might be something at a beginner level where you say, it's your forehand, so you are more comfortable to play this rather than me with my backhand. This is not something you would consider when you get above beginner level, but when you're just starting, that could be a good way to decide who takes that ball. So when you get to intermediate level or above, you need to consider three main things. What was the previous shot? So what is the situation going on in that previous shot? What is the angle of the ball to know where that ball will finish? And then what are the positions of both you and your partner to decide who is best placed to take it? So the best way to think about this is that each side will have their zone. The panels on the glass here at the back are all two meters long, and so you want to think of it in terms of the panels, the two panels to this side, this would be four meters. This four meters here is my home base on the right-hand side, and my partner's home base are the two panels, four meters on that side there. The two meters in the middle could be either myself or my partner that plays that ball, and that is exactly the zone that we're talking about. But if you think of it to begin with, that the four meters to one side and the four meters to this side, those two bases are always going to be that shot for the person in the corner. So when we're talking about the previous shot or what has just happened, and a good example could be the return of serve, for example. So when the server serves towards the glass and the player comes and hits that ball from the glass, this is an example of the previous shot and the game situation, meaning that that ball in the middle now is more likely to be my partner's shot. It's more likely that they will cover. And you often see this where a player serves towards the glass and that player there is, is one step over from their central position on their half because there's an opportunity that they may be covering that back middle position. And if I were to have a shot down the middle here, for example, and I play with the backhand, then I'm also well placed to play that next ball. So it then goes to a little bit neutral. But if you think about the previous shot, if you or your partner is forced towards the side glass or towards the fence, then it's your partner that will probably be in a better place to play that next ball. The next thing to consider is the angle of the shot. Now, in tennis, you often have players saying, well, the ball bounced on my half, so it's my, my side, because you don't get as much angle. Here, the ball could bounce on this half of the court, hit the glass, and finish almost midway on my half of the court. So you've got to consider the angle that the ball comes in you're not thinking about where it bounces on that side, but you're thinking more about where it's going to finish. So if I'm playing with my partner, for example, and the cross-court player hits a volley that bounces, even if it bounces on that side, it hits the glass and it's coming over towards my half of the court, often it's gonna be much easier for me to play that ball. Also, because the ball is coming towards me and it's gonna be going away from them. The ball will come in at this angle and go away from them. So they've got, actually got further to go. So when you think about the angle, you want to think about not where it bounces, but where it's going to finish up. And the final factor that you would need to think about is your positioning with you and your partner. If, for example, I've made a step in here, whether it's the transition zone at an advanced level or I'm in no man's land if I'm at a lower level and I've come forward, into this position here to play a shot and my partner is at the back and the ball goes down that middle, 
he will be much better positioned to move across and play that ball from the middle. Because for me, I'm gonna to have to move quite a long way back to get into that position to play. The same often occurs if you're both at the net and the ball goes past you both down that middle. If one player is a step further back, then they are that much closer to that ball. So your positioning and your proximity to where the ball is going to go down the middle also plays a big part. When we do our match analysis for our members, we often see that there's a, a lack of confidence in this area in the middle, and you, especially if you've got two new players, as in players that are not used to playing with each other, the ball goes down the middle and they both are a bit tentative to go to it. If you are playing with a new partner or someone you're not used to playing with, then a, a really good bit of advice is to be nice and loud and communicate whose ball that is. You know, if you the ball comes in and you call immediately yours or mine, then at least then you know who is going to take that. Now, as you play more and more with a partner, you start to get a certain understanding and, and this is why you see long-term partners, they, they're actually talking more around what their opponents are doing in the game situation rather than yours and mine because they're used to having someone who takes that and, and gets into position to take that ball. But if you're starting out either as a newer player or with a new partner, then communicate nice and clearly so that you both know who's going to play it. So the final piece of the puzzle is what to play when you get here. So you're playing the ball, you've decided, you've communicated with your partner, you've moved across to play this. Remember that you definitely are in the middle, but quite likely your partner has also come a little bit of the way towards that ball, and you need to buy both of you time to get back to your backcourt position. So if you're gonna hit fast to the volleyers, it doesn't give you time to get back here and to cover the big gap that is now in the corner. So you want to play softly if you can, Chiquita to the feet, nice high lob, and give yourself time to move back to that position. And this is something that we're always saying to our members is just be conscious that when you move there, you've got to start thinking about what your next shot is. And that's, I mean, we've got a, a ton of courses on our platform, thepaddleschool.com, and you can see about Chiquita's lobs, about your court positioning, about the tactics, where you should be moving, everything like that. I'll link to that up here, and that's a great place to go. We've got a free trial, so if you do want to go and check that out, you can immediately start improving your game. And then down here, I'm gonna put another video on communication and what you should be saying to your partner during the rest of your game.